Hey guys, I'm Aaron and today we're going to be talking about 4G63s. So we get daily calls uh, about the 4G63 engine platform that we offer. Uh, we do packages uh, for, the, for the Street Evo guys that are up to 800 wheel horsepower using the factory cast block. Uh, but we always get calls um, regarding building an engine to overcompensate their power level goals. Uh, when I then ask them about what horsepower they're targeting, uh, it's usually way under the rating of uh, where we rate our off the shelf engines. Uh, so today's tech talk is pretty much to guide you uh, without having to tell you every time you call um, the difference between a race engine and an 800 wheel horsepower safe engine. Our base engine package uh, is suitable for 90% of the people that come through the door. Um, it's, it's very odd to have 1000 horsepower, real horsepower um, Evos on the street these days. Um, I would class that as a race car and usually uh, you need to go to a methanol fuel um, to, make, to make that safe as well. So the first thing uh, I would ask when building an engine for a customer is A, how much horsepower they're actually going to make regardless of the engine suitability whether it's 800 horsepower or 600 horsepower um, and what the, what the car is going to be used for. If it's going to be used for Targa, circuit, um, street, drag, they're all very different power deliveries uh, and would offer a different stroke depending on turbo choice um, for all of those. So if, if I had a customer that's um, got a full street car or circuit car that was making under 450 kilowatts at the wheels, uh, I would, I'd recommend a 2.3 litre, um, 100 mil stroke crank to gain the maximum amount of torque and least amount of lag possible. Now, in saying that, I would limit that engine rating to 450 kilowatts at the wheels. Um, the reason for that is the added harmonics that that engine will now, now see. So, I, if you're gonna go any further than 450 kilowatt, all the way up to say 600 kilowatts at the wheels, um, I would go a 2.2 liter, uh, even if it's drag, circuit, and street. Um, so, it's, it's easy to see here that the best combo for most people will be a 2.2 liter. Uh, 94 mil crank. Uh, they don't see anywhere near the same amount of harmonics that a 100 mil crank will see, um, and they're not too much worse than a, an 88 mil crank, two liter stock stroke crank. Um, we've noticed this over the years with bolts coming loose. Uh, any 100 mil crank that sort of makes upwards of 500 kilowatts at the wheels is going to have issues keeping everything attached to the engine. The harmonics uh, that it sees, it can't. Uh, be seen, but the side effects from it can be, and over the years, that that's one massive problem with the with a four-cylinder engine. So another real common question we get is, uh, can I save money on an engine build uh, and and use a cheaper conrod? So the as soon as I hear that, I think, why would you drop sort of five hundred dollars uh, Aussie dollars um, to? Uh, restrict the amount of horsepower or reliability um, an engine that costs sort of 10 to 15 grand has. So you've got something you've spent 10 to 15 grand, um, you save $500 and that whole engine now uh, has, re has reduced reliability. Um, we won't offer it. As soon as we have that question, we tell them otherwise. Um, if they say they want to supply their own Conrod, uh, we won't assemble it, mainly for the fact that we know that it's not going to be reliable. All of our base engine packages, 800 wheel horsepower options, uh, come with a Nitto Performance Engineering I-Beam Conrod. Um, the it's a steel option. We use the aluminium GRP Conrod in all of the race engines. Uh, we push this rod over 1,000 wheel horsepower, so we know that it's well within spec for 800 wheel horsepower. It's safe. If you have a look at the difference between Dimensions, you can tell um, straight away just upon looking without doing any further testing that the rod's going to be a heap stronger. Um, I beam over H beam, there's a lot 
involved. Uh, I can't go into full detail because I'll be here talking for hours. Um, it's not all about uh, weight and the amount of material. It's all about design. Uh, you can have a H-beam Conrod that will break at sort of 300, 350 kilowatts of the wheels um, made by one manufacturer and then H-beam Conrod made by another manufacturer that can that, that's good enough for sort of 350 horsepower per cylinder. So, which may weigh less than an I-beam. Best bang for buck, the Nudo Performance Engineering I-beam steel rod, uh, and, and we've been using them flat out now with no issues. Pistons, so we've used many different pistons over the years, uh, different manufacturers and designs, uh, symmetrical, asymmetric, uh, piston skirts uh, coating, no coating, gas ports, no gas ports, uh, different ring thicknesses. Uh, compression heights, that's, a, that's another massive uh, question that we get when it comes to engine building. Uh, obviously that comes down to what fuel's used. Uh, there's a certain area there where um, there's not gonna be too much of a difference, like eight and a half to one, nine and a half to one. You, generally, if the fuel is good enough, you're not gonna see any knock issues. Uh, and you're definitely not going to see any larger torque amounts. Most of our stuff that I talk about is turbocharged as well. So adding a turbo onto something um, with sort of 1.0 different compression ratio, you're not going to see any difference at all. So we've uh, settled with a Wiseco heavy duty version for our spec. Uh, we get them with an upgraded pin. Uh, depending on the usage, we add gas porting and we always have piston skirt coating. Every engine that we do gets a set of ARP main studs. Uh, this helps with the clamping of the, the main girdle, uh, which allows for less distortion of that tunnel uh, during operating conditions. Uh, they're torque to yield main bolt factory regardless, so they have to be replaced. You might as well replace it with the aftermarket option. So head gaskets. Uh, this would be a, a very common question that we get. Um, it's quite frequently we get someone call up and they're comparing to one of their mates' uh, engines that, that, that's just been built um, and they've got a far superior head gasket and they're asking for the same thing. Um, the term fire rings, copper gasket. So we have here, I'm gonna show you the difference between a multi-layer steel gasket that we use on all of our 800 horsepower uh, packages, which is warranted. Uh, obviously the tune has a lot to do with it. So when we're in control of the tune, there's no issues there. Uh, and then we do have a lot of tuners that we deal with um, day to day in different states, even in different countries. So there are a lot of recommended tuners that we can, we can pass you on to and there's no issues with warranty when it comes to an engine. So I'm gonna show you the difference now between um, the generic MLS gasket that we use um, versus the copper gasket with the, the bronze alloy um, firings. Uh, so this is the obviously the factory cast iron block from an Evo 8 and this is a Nido performance engineering head gasket which we've been using for years now with no issues. Uh, we've had nitrous insulations, uh, 50 pounds of boost, 600 plus kilowatts, um, not an issue yet. Um, so traditionally installed like that. Now the difference between the firing gasket and uh, the, the copper surrounding, uh, I can show you on a billet block here that we've got. So we have machined firing grooves, which is a locator for the ring. Show you that. I'm not going to go pressing these in properly, but you'll get the idea. So those receiver grooves will um, locate those rings. And they've been machine proud of this copper gasket. So there might be sort of three thou crush on that ring or preload if you want to call it. Okay, so the firings are machined to have about a three thou crush. Um, they sit proud of the copper gasket by about three thou. Um, that measurement isn't 
law, like it can be changed depending on engine or the builder. Now, you might think, well, why are we doing it to this engine versus this one? Uh, I don't recommend it for the up to 800 wheel horsepower, but I do recommend it for over that. Now, the problem is with the factory cast block is that we get a lot of block twist. Um, they were never designed to make 800 wheel horsepower. With that block twist and the rigidity of the, the bronze uh, firings and the copper gasket, I've seen so many times cylinder wall splitting. So downside of firings on a cast iron block, cylinder wall splitting 100%. Um, also, they require more maintenance. So usually they're not a set and forget item where you use a sealant on the copper gasket, uh, it seals oil and water, uh, and then the fire ring traditionally seals the, the, the compression gases. Um, usually we'll find that some engines can last a year, some need to be pulled down after six months depending on usage. Whereas the MLS Nido head gasket that we run on the cast iron block never needs to be touched. Um, if that ever has an issue, there was an issue that caused it, whether it be a lean out, high detonation, knock, um, there, was an, there was a reason for it. Uh, whereas the fire ring copper gasket setup is just unreliable with a block that twists, end of story. Uh, with the billet block, we don't have that, that twisting um, distortion. So we would not have the issues, the maintenance level issues with the firing setup that we'd have on the cast iron block that twists. We get asked frequently about head studs. Uh, everyone usually wants to go straight to the top. Uh, bigger is better. Um, not, not generally in every case, bigger is better here. Uh, if you're gonna drill and tap a block to accept a larger stud, you're taking away material from the from the block itself. So you're, you've got a block that's already twisting, uh, not so rigid, and you're going to take more material away from it to make a, to have a bigger stud. Um, a bigger stud, generally of a good material, needs even an even higher torque load when you're when you're setting up the stud, which puts even more twist and stress on the block itself. Um, it'll lead to you know crushing of the cylinder head uh, also. So we use a factory size thread head stud. Um, usually L19 is fine up until 800 wheel horsepower. Some people might say you're crazy, we use 625. Um, I, I guarantee that there will no, not be a head stud issue or a head gasket leaking at 800 wheel horsepower if tuned correctly. Um, you can't just go throwing all these parts at it to try and band-aid another issue that you've got. We have multiple cylinder head packages ranging from the standard reconditioned service all the way up to oversized valves, uh, upgraded springs and retainers, uh, ported polish, intake and exhaust ports. Um, there is a cylinder head for every application. I hope this helped with any questions that you may have had. Uh, we've got a lot of this info on our website, so feel free to check it out. And if you've got any more questions, hit us up. We're always here to help.